this organization does what we say and we say what we mean. We're an organization that's about people helping people and we reach them through a common modality that speaks to just about everybody in the United States and that's sport. So team camp is the kickoff of our season. The guys on the team come from you know, every corner of the United States. Uh, actually, we even have a guy on the team from New Zealand. I might not race more than one or two days with some of these other guys. Team camp affords that opportunity where you can really level up your game and, and get something for people that you might not race with very much. Coming together at camp is essential. Um, if we're gonna be successful throughout the season, we need to know each other, we need to trust each other, we need to know how you're gonna operate, what motivates you, what doesn't. This sport is, it requires teamwork, it requires family, it requires trust. Having that balance within our team where you, you look to some of the guys and you know they're just gonna like cut the tension when things are tough or, or rough. So you're telling me cold water boils faster We'll get to a water. rolling boil faster than water. So water. That is so false. All right, somebody look it up. Right, cold yeah. water boils faster than colder water and it's a myth to say colder water. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but there is, I mean, there's something, there's something else is what I've heard. Like, there's something, I forget what it is. Maybe it freezes. Maybe warm water freezes faster than cold water. That's also I mean, false. I mean, that is nine, also very false. Let's look it up. That feels just. I get mean, nine out of ten. It's literally like the transitive property. Like no transitive property. It's possible under certain conditions, but it's not true. As in, actually, the warm water is actually cold water, and it freezes faster. <laughs> yeah, our, I think our team is pretty pretty awesome in that there's so much balance. And even the guys who are at polar opposites of the personality spectrum are, are such good friends um, that like, it, we drive off of that instead of like butting heads or anything. This year too, I think we've added some really valuable staff and they have just created this amazing program with specific workouts, specific you know goals for each day that involve the entire team. So it's less of a lead out style and more of a collective trying to lead out on a pretty stiff climb with people trying to get in the way is essentially what's going to happen. Yeah, so let's let's hit it. Let's cruise. Um, you know, you don't need to throttle it on the front, but keep it keep steady pressure and then feel free to roll as quick as you want, as fast as you want. It's a big day, like 120 miles. And I think we got three or four different sets of chase drills where we're going to be sending some guys up the road, have a chase group working together, bring them back over the course of 6K just trying to really calculate that effort and make sure we're talking, communicating well. Um, and I, it'll be nice because Isaiah is going to have the ability to pull up, give us instructions, and we got to adapt to that. Cycling is one of those moments where you're truly in the present for the majority of the time you're on the bike. And I think that's really hard for people to do just in their daily lives. And on the bike, it's like everything slows down and you can really just take account for everything that's going on in your life. and. It gives you the opportunity to really reach, I think, deep inside yourself, especially if you're out in a five hour day, you know, you get broken down to a very raw emotional level sometimes. And sometimes that exposes some really hard things, but some really great things at the same time. You know, utilizing cycling as a way to get through trauma or stress has been something that I think all of us have on one level or another um, experienced, which is another part of, I think, I think our collective purpose and our strength as an organization. You know, for me personally, cycling has been a way to not just unplug or to ignore other things that have been stressful in life, but it's been a way to really process them through that meditative purpose and that almost spiritual experience of, of being on the bike for a long period of time and feeling that sense of, of work and accomplishment. And I think that that's a shared understanding for a lot of us at this organization. Cycling is important to me because it just it's what gives me balance, um, and it what, it's what helps me see purpose in everything else I do in my life, whether it's being a dad, uh, being a husband, my job in education, it ties all of it together, um, and it helps me kind of build that storyline of, of victories and failures, of hard efforts and struggle and triumph. But success on the road for us also means success as a nonprofit. It leads to new opportunities, 
to connect with veterans in ways that we haven't before. It leads to new partnerships that make equipment and you know, training knowledge and all of these things that serve as barriers to our veteran community and makes those more accessible. It's what motivates our guys to do the little things the right way. They know people are watching them. They know that they're um, inspiring them. They know that they're empowering them in unique ways. I, I really do think like it gives them just some advantage that they have over the other teams because like those veterans and their responsibility to them and all that sort of stuff is going to be there on Monday whether they had like their best race or their worst race over the weekend. So they just don't have time to have a long memory of any experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's like they have to be stable for like this, this bigger thing that they're doing. We talk about this a lot. When you're working for someone else, you can go 10, 20 times deeper that you could if you were just trying to work for yourself. So being able to work with veterans and kind of understand what they went through and what they still go through allowed me to just kind of better a lot of areas in my own life and just have like a deeper understanding and appreciation for a lot of the things like that we take for granted on a daily basis. Educate, equip, and empower. I mean, it's, those are like three pillars that as a team you just kind of learn and like that fourth bar I think just represents two people from different backgrounds kind of coming together for a similar goal and just really creating like this deep sense of understanding of different perspectives of life. The fourth bar to me is the echelon. It's the community. Um, people ask like what does Project Echelon mean? What, where did that name come from? And it's really a group of people working together towards a common goal, sharing the effort and rotating through just like we would in an echelon in a race. And for me it's at the bottom as well because it's the foundation of it all. And without it, everything else crumbles. I think it would either be community or mentorship because, yeah, the, the role that I fill for the veterans is a mentor and a coach. Um, but the role that my teammates fill for me is very similar. I'd have to probably say the word embrace. Embrace the process, embrace the training, embrace the therapeutic aspect. Personally, come out of it, I've been able to embrace people I might not have had the same political ideologies as or backgrounds, interests, things that drove me. Um, but um, embracing this community and embracing each individual voice and letting that feel welcome and held um, has been a part of my experience in this that has been really cool. We are an organization that is about people helping people regardless of their situation. You could be one of the top veteran cyclists in the country and we want to help you. Uh, because that's what we do. Like, I want to reach my hand out and say, how can I help? And our guys are a part of that solution. They're a part of that network. You're going to lose more often than you win. And you have to be able to pick out what the wins are within those losses. That's an important lesson. Um, and you need to be able to then capitalize on them, learn from them, and use them to tackle your next win. Measuring yourself by the result of a single event is a good way to be disappointed, especially in a sport where so few people win the most often. If you didn't give up and you did the best that you can, you just got beat. You didn't actually lose. You can't be yeah, binary where it's either win or lose because um, that's how uh, people have short lifespans within the sport um, because it is so difficult. Without sport, we wouldn't reach the community in the way that we need to. And without the community, we wouldn't have a team. Um, both of those things come together to make something beautiful and that's Project Echelon.